Other breaking news we're following tonight, including dramatic new developments in Donald Trump's civil fraud trial in New York City. The judge overseeing the case sharply rebuking the former president after uh, Trump attacked a court clerk on social media. Let's bring in CNN's Kara Scannell. She's outside the courthouse in New York for us. Kara, the day ended with the judge issuing uh, effectively a gag order for Donald Trump. That's right, Wolf. The judge issued a gag out order after a 45 minute delay this afternoon in the court proceedings. He came on the bench and said that he was warning both sides, all parties, that they could not make any comments about any members of his court staff. And this followed Trump's post on his social media platform today about the judge's clerk. She's his right hand person. And on that post, the Trump had linked her without any evidence to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. So when the judge took the bench, he said that the post that Trump made was untrue, and he said personal attacks on members of my court staff are unacceptable, inappropriate, and will not be tolerated under any circumstances. And the judge said that he had warned the parties yesterday about this, and that was because Trump had made statements about the clerk in the hallway as he was entering the courtroom. Here's what he said. And this rogue judge, a Trump hater, the only one that hates Trump more is his associate up there, his person that works with him. And she's screaming into his ear on almost every time we ask a question. A disgrace. You want to know the truth? It's a disgrace. And the judge said if anyone violates this order, they will be facing some serious sanctions. And those sanctions could be anything from financial penalties to potentially jail time. Wolf. Interesting. Uh, and Kara, what actually happened? with the testimony in court today. So today on the stand was more direct testimony and the cross-examination of Trump's longtime accountant, Donald Bender. When he was asked questions on direct by the attorney general's office, he said that it was the Trump organization that gave him all the information that went into the financial statements that Mazars had compiled. And these statements are at the center of the case. They're the statements the judge has said are already fraudulent. Now, he also testified when questions by the attorney general staff that he later learned only two years ago that the Trump Trump organization had appraisals for some of these properties in some of these years that they did not share with Mazars, which could have potentially impacted the values put on these financial statements. And when asked by one of the state attorney generals whether that mattered, he said yes, they would not have issued the financial statements had they known that. Wolf. Kara Scudell uh, in New York City for us. Uh, Kara, thank you very, very much. Aaron, back to you. All right, Wolf. And joining us now to talk about this new reporting, Ryan Goodman, the former special counsel at the Department of Defense and now with Just Security, and the legal reporter for Bloomberg News, Eric Larson, who has been in the courtroom uh, so far here day, day in and day out. I don't know how many days. It's going to be a Just long two. one for you. Yeah. Just two, but you got a long one to go. <laughs> okay, so you were there today, and obviously Kara's going through the reporting of, 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 of the takeaways legally. What stood out to you? Well, honestly, what we just heard about the gag order, I think we were expecting a pretty quiet day of testimony from Trump's former, you know, longtime accountants, which is important testimony for sure for the, a case like this. Uh, but we were expecting it to be like a little dry. And then out of nowhere, uh, we heard about this closed hearing where the public and press were not allowed in. And that's where they were having these discussions about what turned into this gag order. And I think that um, it's kind of a bad sign for Trump that this is just the second day of his first of six trials and he's already sort of being threatened in this way. Um, it's pretty serious conduct, as the judge said on the bench when he did let everyone back in. He said, mm -hmm. this just cannot be tolerated. And, and Ryan, here's the thing, though. I, I understand the judge is saying it can't be tolerated, and yet it is tolerated because he keeps doing it in case after case, and there's been narrow gag orders, now this one. Uh, you heard Kara say that there could be penalties, could include financial penalties or jail time. Will there really be penalties? I think so. I think if he crosses the line at this point, because apparently the judge did warn his counsel yesterday in a closed manner, so it was off the record. And mm -hmm. so then he violated it within 24 hours. And the judge didn't just tell him uh, that this is your new set of rules. He said, take that down. And what did Trump do? He took it down. The post was eliminated post or deleted. Was eliminated by, by Trump, by not, Trump. By, not by whatever the social media site. Right. Um, and so it's now laying down a ground rule. He's now, the judge has said, there will be stiff sanctions. And I think that Trump has to take it very seriously. In a certain sense, he's met his match, and the match is the justice system. And he's also facing a similar kind of gag order that might be imposed in D.C. Right, right, which I know you've talked a lot about. At this point, narrowly targeted, but they can get, they can get wider and wider.
Exactly. Now, Eric, what about the um, second day? Obviously, Trump didn't need to come at all, right? He's here by choice. Everyone that uh, was surprised he came, they said, okay, he came on day one for the PR of it, the politics of it, but then he showed up on day two. Now, he's going to show up on day three, uh, which I'll ask you about in a moment, but did you notice, what's his demeanor like? How involved is he in what's going on in the room? Uh, his demeanor is, is very serious and stern. He's not cracking any smiles. He's not joking with anyone. Uh, but while the trial is in session, he's frequently like leaning over, speaking with his, his lawyers on either side of him, um, staring intently at the monitor of evidence that's in front of him. Um, he's paying close attention, but he's often like hunched over, folding his arms, hmm. um, looking kind of angry at different times, to be honest. But, you know, a def- he's a defendant in a serious trial, so that's not too surprising. But um, he's taking it you know, very seriously, and he does not seem very happy. Ryan, what do, what do you make of that? And by the way, to point out, he, he did say, I'll be back tomorrow. So he's coming in every day. He's deeply involved, as Eric is saying. What's the implication of that? So I think there are a couple implications. One is he seems to be trying to control the narrative, but now he's kind of run into a wall with the justice, mm. uh, with the judge. And that's in that he makes these statements outside of the courtroom. Yesterday, he made a statement outside of the courtroom that, oh, look, the judge just overruled himself on the statute of limitations. Then we come in this morning, and the judge says to the courtroom, I did no such thing. So there's, a, there's this weird debate going on with statements he makes out of the courtroom and then what the judge does to him inside yeah. the courtroom. So I think that's part of what's happened to him. I'm not sure he's going to be able to control that narrative much longer. That's one part. But the other part is, in a certain sense, he is conveying that he has a lot of visibility and attention to detail. Mm-hmm. And that's actually what the case is about. Did you know all the details? Because it's otherwise, then it's on you. And it seems very clear he did, right? He wants to be there calling every shot. I mean, Absolutely, and looking at all the exhibits and things like that. 